All right, go. Hi, my name is Gary Tibbetts. I'm the owner of Quantum Harvest. And this is our model 6000. This is the largest unit that we make. It's a 6000 watt inverter with 1500 watts of solar panels and weighs about 2,500 pounds. And uh, I'll step out of the way. You can kind of get an idea of the scale of it next to my truck. And we'll, I'll do a, kind of a quick walk around and point it out on the, on the front. There's two electric jacks for, for hoisting it up and down and unhooking it, making it easy. And you, oh, it also makes it easy to change tires. As you come around it here, this is the this is the main control box here. This is where the inverter and all the circuitry are. It's EMP protected. It's inside of a metal box. This compartment down here is where the batteries go. On the back here, there's, note that there's two stabilizer arms. Those, are, those deploy out, as you'll see in a minute. So, so in case a gust of wind or something isn't going to push up, upset it. Camera's going to come around here and kind of get a full view of the thing. This is the this is the box where the, the outlets are, and the other the other jack on this side. So, pause for a second. Okay, go ahead. Start recording again. It is recording. Oh. This is the place where the where it plugs in. You notice that there's a there's a 220 twist lock outlet, three 110s, and this this uh, this is an input for the AC charger. So I'm going to go through the procedure here of setting this up, getting it unhooked from the truck, and getting it set up. So the first thing you're going to do is open the control box here, prop it open. You could, as you can see, this is the the brains of the outfit here. I don't, I'm not sure how well a view of the camera's got, but uh, this is the control panel. And behind this big blue thing here, this is the inverter. This is the sol this is the Outback solar charge controller. All the fuses and switches are here. You've got a separate AC charger here. And there's a ventilation system inside, which you can see here, that draws cooling air in. So this, this unit can be operated with the, with the cover shut in case it's raining. Brief overview of the control panel. Got the, the main the main switch is here. This is the switch that turns the inverter on and off. You've got uh, this two 12, two 12 volt cigarette lighter outlets here, and a USB port here. And this is the meter that monitors the system voltage. Monitors the battery bank voltage in red, and the charging amps are in blue. Obviously, there's nothing going into it right now. Over here, this is these are all the controls here for the for the jacks, the hoist. They're all protected with circuit breakers. There's a there's a status indicator light here. If you turn that on, you notice that the red status indicator light comes on. This is your 12 volt power. This indicates that the out the, the rear stabilizers have not been deployed, which locks out the array, so you're not going to be able to raise the array until those stabilizers are deployed. So that's what we'll do next. I know what's funny. Look at that. On the camera, it's like it's it flickers, but in actual, it's not flickering at all. Oh, <laughs> I, my camera person just pointed out to me that the the meter here is flickering on the camera, but it, I'm not sure why it's doing that on the camera. But in real life, it, it's not; it's steady. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is unhook off the truck. So in order to do that, we're gonna rate, gonna run these jacks down. You notice that each jack has its own switch. It's, it's going to take a moment to run these down. They're powerful, but they're not real fast. Let's zoom in on that. That is slowly going down. Probably the longest part of the whole setup feature is just letting these things run out. But they, they do take the work out of hooking it up and unhooking it.
Now it's touched the ground. Okay, I'm just going to run this up to clear the ball hitch on the truck. Then I'm going to move the truck out of the way. I hope the safety chains. Okay, now the next step, you'll notice that the, the thing is nose high. The next step is going to be to lower the nose down so that so we can deploy the rear outriggers. So I'm just going to lower this down. What I, what I'm, what I want to do is get it, get it slightly nose down. We'll see why in a moment. Probably good enough. Now the next part, part is we pull out the sta rear stabilizers. The rear stabilizers are held by these locking pins, so you're gonna pull these pins out and lock them. And pull it out for a ways, and you let it back. And you notice when it comes back, it's gonna lock in place. Do the same for the other one. Drop these pads down just to make contact with the ground. It's always important to lock the pins in place. You don't want them coming out. And now, go back around to the front. Notice at this point that the, the red indicator light has gone out. Now the green indicator is lit, indicates that the stabilizers are successfully deployed. Now we're gonna now we're gonna raise the nose and we're gonna put pressure on those. Now this you can actually raise both wheels off the ground with these jacks. I wouldn't recommend it because then it's gonna allow the thing to twist a little bit on the strut. All I'm doing is just I just want to load up these these stabilizers on back. So they've got, there's a good amount of pressure on them, but not so much that the tires are raised. At that point, she's ready to raise the panels. The panels have a tie-down strap here, so let that off first. Don't try to raise it with a strap on, because I've discovered that it doesn't work very well. Now the cent central switch here is the array. So we're going to go ahead and raise that. We're going to run this array right. We're going to run it right up until it's vertical. There's a, there's a stop switch. It'll stop automatically. So you're just going to hold it until it's till it stops. Again, it takes a moment for the voice to raise things up. You really don't want to go too fast anyway. Sense of breaking in there. That's it. Shuts off automatically no matter what you do. You can't go any further than that.
the next step is to fold the panels out. To do that, you, each, each panel's got a, got a rubber lock on it here to keep them so they don't swing free when you stand it up. So you're just going to unlock that. You're going to swing this first one out. I'll show, I'll show a detail of the lock and pins in a moment. First one, now the second panel's got a latches on this side, so we're going to fold this one out. Now if you, if you bring the camera around here, I can show you the, the me mechanism that locks these in place. It's just a, just a very simple linchpin here attached to a lanyard. The one up there is spring loaded, so you're just going to pull that down, swing the panel in, then let go of it until it, it latches, and you're going to drop the pin in this hole here. Latch the pin, that's it. Panels are ready to be raised into place. Now, ordinarily, seems like this is main, the sun rarely shines. The sun's not shining today. This really isn't in a good spot for getting sunlight, but it's for the purposes of the video, it doesn't really matter. Ordinarily, you're going to park this trail in such a way so that the back end of it is going to face south. And then you're going to come in here, and once the panels are up, the main switch is on. The next thing you're going to do, it's very, very important that you don't put power from the solar panels into the controller without it being on. It has to be on first. It's very important. So there's a disconnect for the solar panels. Right now it's off. So now that the you see that the controller is hopefully in the camera, you can see that it's on. It's displaying um, data on the display. And that's so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip this on. And that connects the solar panels. So if there was actually sun shining, it would be generating electricity right now. Now you're going to adjust, you're going to adjust your panels back with a, with an array hoist to get you the, get you the best angle. This time of the year, probably going to shoot for about 45 degrees. It's probably going to be your above your optimum angle, which is about there. And that's it. Now, at this point, you'd, uh, you'd switch the inverter on, plug in your loads, cords, whatever, whatever you're going to run it on. Let it do its thing. Wonderful.